Okay, so as a person who makes videos about being productive and kind of living your best life, I'd like to think I'm pretty well placed to talk about good and bad habits, but the honest truth is that I actually really struggle with certain bad habits. I bite my nails prolifically. I have a really quite addictive personality, which is good in some ways in that I can then more easily build good habits. But for example, I am at the moment pretty addicted to going on my phone and scrolling through Instagram again, which is something I've got out of in the past and I'm determined to get out of again using the techniques we're gonna run through in this video. And I also have got into a terrible habit of always being late for things. Like I'm known for always being late. And that's because I leave way too much to do until the last minute, just try to cram too much into my days and then end up putting myself under pressure and annoying other people. But having this channel really gave me the perfect incentive, I guess, to go out and say, right, I'm gonna find some techniques as to breaking bad habits, building good habits, try them out, and then I'm gonna share the best ones with you wonderful people. And so today I'm gonna to share the two best techniques I've found for breaking bad habits, and then the three most effective techniques for building positive ones in their place. So the most powerful technique I have ever tried for breaking bad habits. That has led, I wanna show you, those are not bitten. And let me tell you now, 14 days ago, before I started this technique, those would have been bitten to shreds. I have not bitten them at all for like two weeks or hardly at all. Let me tell you how. So this technique is based on principles I came across in a book called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. He talks about the importance when you're building good habits or breaking bad habits of first of all, accountability. You need to have someone who holds you accountable when you do that bad habit. Second, of tapping into our human desire to be competitive with one another. We want to be better than other people. And third, most crucially, I think that there's some negative consequence to doing the bad habit, an immediate negative consequence that makes you aware of the fact you're doing that bad habit. So these are the kind of triggers that I'm playing into with this technique. The technique is so simple. When I was driving home with Beth the other night, I basically said to her, right, I've had enough of you. She picks the skin around her fingers and me biting my nails. I've had enough of that, we need to stop. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to watch each other over the next couple of days. I would recommend starting at a weekend when you're gonna be with someone. It could be a housemate, it could be a partner, it could just be a close friend who's gonna hold you accountable and say, ah, biting your nails. Every single time you do that single bad habit, you get a one pound fine. Keep a note on your phone of the kind of stakes between you. That one pound goes into a tally and you will have to donate that amount of money to charity. Within the first like two or three days, I caught Beth picking her fingers and she caught me biting my nails probably five or six times. Currently, right now, like two and a half weeks later, our current fine tally is she's on eight pounds and I'm on seven pounds. And the brilliance of this is that because we built up this kind of awareness in just two days of finding one another, we now don't even need to be in each other's presence. Like I sent a message to Beth yesterday because I have my finger in my mouth and said to her, one pound fine. I've just find myself one pound. Be disciplined with it. You have to be honest and open and want to change it for yourself and not trick the system. But doing this with one other person will mean, yeah, we've made 15 pounds for charity. Nice. And more than that, we have both stopped a horrendous bad habit. And I really cannot emphasize enough, Beth has been picking her fingers and making them bleed around here for literally years. I have been biting my nails and trying to stop for the last 20 years. And this works. So before we move on to the next technique, I want to quickly share what for me has been a hugely positive habit. And that is speaking to a therapist using BetterHelp, today's sponsor. I've spoken in the past pretty openly about how I really struggled in my second year of university, putting tons of pressure on myself to study all the time, comparing myself to others, and making myself so anxious that I developed IBS. At that time, speaking to a therapist massively helped me, and now I've begun regular therapy using BetterHelp as a preventative tool to look after my mental health. Talking to a therapist when I feel like I want to, about any anxieties I have, or ways that I can reduce stress. 
BetterHelp's onboarding assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist within 48 hours. They have a very broad range of expertise within their therapist network with over 20,000 therapists currently on the platform. You can use the time with your therapist as suits you, scheduling weekly, bi-weekly or monthly sessions as you want and you can message your therapist at any time. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and so much more convenient. So yeah, you can visit betterhelp.com forward slash Liam Porritt. That's better, H-E-L-P forward slash Liam Porritt through the link at the top of the description to join over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Plus, you'll get 10% off your first month. Okay, second technique, similarly simple, is to delete or replace the source of your bad habit. For me, scrolling through Instagram is a really bad habit, something I've got back into doing for literally probably about half an hour a day based on my screen time data for the last month or so. I actually came across this slight tweak of just deleting it completely, which is one option. When I was looking through, somewhat ironically, Grace uh, Beverly's Instagram story the other day, and I noticed that she said, oh, I'm deleting Instagram for the weekend. And I was like, huh, that is pretty cool. I want to share like my life and I enjoy sharing stuff on Instagram and I'm trying to do that productively for my business and to get inspired by other people, particularly during the week. But the weekend when I have more free time, I'll generally just be like on public transport and I'll just scroll through or whatever. So I have now taken to on my iPhone, removing Instagram from my home screen. So it's still on my phone, but I just don't go on it when it's not on my home screen for the weekend. And that has been huge. So yeah, either temporarily or permanently delete is one option. Second idea is to replace. So I use this in respect of snacking. I am, as I have said before, a cereal snacker. Like I snack a lot and it's not a bad thing. Like I can have relatively good self-control in terms of I'll have like one biscuit every hour. So it's not like I'm going through a whole packet of biscuits every hour. But for me, it's been huge to replace unhealthy snacks with more healthy snacks that I actually enjoy just as much. So I now in the afternoon will have a Huel bar that keeps me relatively fuller for the afternoon. Similarly in the morning, I'll often have one of my Huel shakes instead of eating many biscuits throughout the morning. And for example, like we've tried to make sure that we're constantly keeping fruit in stock uh, in our fruit bowl so that I'll have an apple or a pear where I would just have like a couple of chocolates at one point because I have a bit of a sweet tooth. I still eat some chocolate biscuits. I'll still have some sugary snacks. I'll still have several kind of quality street a day at the moment because we're getting through our Christmas quality street still but I am much better now at snacking relatively more healthily than I was before. So think about how you can replace the kind of source of your bad habit with something more healthy, but similarly satisfying. Third, you need to build and break habits one by one. I think people often at the start of the new year when it gets to spring and then maybe in like an autumn reset, have these moments where they'll be like, right, I'm gonna eat healthily. I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna not buy my nails. I'm gonna stop smoking. I'm gonna do all these things all at once and they end up miserable doing none of them and quitting. I recommend very, very focused approach to both habit building and bad habit breaking. I, for example, at the moment, am on the bad habit side, 100% focused on not biting my nails. And on the good habit side, I'm focused on exercise. So I'm going for a walk twice a week. I'm doing workouts twice a week and I'm going on a run twice a week. That's it. I'm really not putting pressure on myself to do anything else good habit wise. So the snacking stuff I was talking about. That's something I built at the end of last year. I'm still continuing to do it because it's a habit, but I'm not focused on that now. I'm not trying to also kind of eat more healthily or eat more salad or do anything else. I'm just focused on those habits. I would recommend using an app like the Done app to build in two or three habits that I'm going to start with, both breaking and building. And then gradually, step by step, you can, once you've built those habits, build other habits on top. And hopefully you'll kind of keep up with the habits you've already built and by six months time you'll have maybe 10 habits like I currently do in the done app that you're regularly keeping up with but if you expect yourself to build a ton of good habits and break a ton of bad habits all at once I guarantee you you just won't do it okay so once you're focused on those one or two good habits that you want to build you need to start being kind to yourself and you need to start making doing those good habits easier so the technique here is one that I've been kind of practicing for the last probably two years and it is huge I think people when they think about good habits tend to imagine like people in the army, people who are suffering, people who are putting themselves through pain to go to the gym and study all these hours and making their life like miserable by doing good habits. 
and it shouldn't be that way and it doesn't have to be that way. You need to make those good habits relatively appealing for yourself at the start so you more or less want to do them. Let me give you a few examples. Last year, Beth really worked on the good habit of drinking more water. She was awful at drinking water and as you can see here, I've got some lemon in my water here, an easy technique to make drinking water more palatable. I also bought her a soda stream for her birthday or Christmas. I know, <laughs> such a lucky girlfriend. <laughs> I bought her a soda stream because she really likes fizzy water. So now she regularly makes fizzy water, makes her drink more water. Find ways to make the good habit more enjoyable. Similarly for me, going to the gym or going on a run, I take it really easy. Like last week, I went to the gym one day and I did do some weights. I did do a workout, but I took it pretty easy. I was listening to a really interesting audio book making notes the whole time for a future video. So I just enjoyed my time at the gym. Like I went on a quick cross train at the end, didn't feel that great. So I stopped, I got off. I know I'll feel better another day. And actually later in the week, I felt much better. I was really pumped and I went for it. Just be kind to yourself, make it acceptable for you. Take it easy one or two days. Final example, cold showering, a habit I built last year, still doing it at the end of every single shower. I'm now having around a minute of cold, like freezing cold water on me, but I don't do it every day. If I feel like I just want to relax, I feel like I really can't be bothered or I'm taking a shower in the evening and just want to chill out or the weekend sometimes I won't have that cold shower. I'll allow myself to just have a break, not beat myself up. Okay, final technique, stack good habits. This is probably the most powerful technique I picked up in James Clear's Atomic Habits. And I think it first of all really helps to understand a little the science behind good habit building. So a study from Oxford found that as babies, we have more synapses than we do as adults. Now, why aren't babies then super intelligent, like really good at everything and adults worse than babies at things? Clearly that's not the case. Well, the reason is that we do a thing throughout our lives called synaptic pruning. Basically like synapses get killed off as we go through life and we don't use them. And instead our brain then focuses on building tons of synapses in the areas we practice the most. So when we have habits, effectively we have like very high amounts of synapses in those areas of our brain triggered by those things that we do regularly. Therefore, once we have a habit that's formed, it's relatively easy because of all those synapses that fire. Like we don't have to think about opening the blinds on a morning when we wake up, we just do it. Or brushing our teeth or taking a shower for most people. <laughs> and the reason for that is because we have loads of synapses. So it's very easy then to piggyback off all of those synapses and to try and build another habit on top of one of those pre-existing habits. So a couple of examples of how I'm using habit stacking myself. When I go on my morning walk twice a week and also generally when I'm brushing my teeth, I stretch. Stretching is a positive habit I've wanted to build and doing it at times where, you know, I always brush my tweet. Tweet? You know, I always brush my teeth twice a day. I go on these walks twice a week. It allows me to stretch for relatively short periods of time when I'm brushing my teeth and more prolonged periods of time a couple of times a week while I'm out on my walk. It's a habit that I have now built pretty effectively because I have stacked it on top of other habits. Another one, this ball I bought just before Christmas because I was getting kind of pain in my foot and in my lower leg. And so now whenever I'm sat at my desk, this is under my desk and it allows me to roll my foot on top of it. It's supposed to be good for releasing tension and basically not having foot pain. So another easy habit that I've stacked on top of just being sat at my desk. Cold showering, another habit of mine. Whenever I exercise, when I get back, I know I'm gonna have a cold shower. It's just something I do after exercise to help compound the positive benefits of my exercise. I'm in that mental space where I'm like, come on. And then I just cold shower. So I have habit stacked that cold showering on top of exercise. And finally, when I'm making my morning coffee, I'll stand there and I'll think about three things I'm grateful for. Practicing gratitude, a positive habit I'm building on top of a pre-existing habit of making coffee pretty much every day, often several times a day. Alrighty, so I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Please do check out my other video where I talk about the goals and habits that I'm trying to build into 2022. And I hope to speak to you again very, very soon.